Hey y'all, it's Dana the Marigold Shepherdess and my next project, I wanted to have some fun with some different breeds of wool all together and so I have over here a selection of wool that I'm going to use to make a skein of yarn and so I want to go through with you what my plans are for that in a minute but let's go over uh, the breeds of wool I've got here and look at those. All raw wool and this is the first one right here. This is from one of my Gulf Coast native sheep. This is from a sheep named Anya and it's it, it's got a pretty decent staple length for a Gulf Coast. Not a Gulf Coast don't tend to have, you know, those four to six inch long staple lengths. Uh, but that's about three and a three to three and a half. So that's not bad. So that's Anya. Uh, this here is um, Tunis. And so this is from a Tunis fleece. And so it's about the same staple length. Yeah. It's about the same staple length as the Gulf Coast. Um, next to it, this is Romney, and this is only six months of growth. Um, first of all, so this one's from my farm. This one is from Sheep Coat Farm. Uh, I don't think this you, I think she just had a number. I don't think she had a name. Uh, this is from a Romney um, from. Michigan. So these obviously Georgia fleece because I grew it. This is a Georgia fleece uh, from Sheep Cope, which is not too far from me. This is from Michigan, Michigan from Penny from 3LNS um, Farm. And this is about six months of growth for, a, for this Romney uh, whose name is Helen. And I picked this because, once again, staple links are about the same. This is Clun Forest. This is another rare breed. So the Gulf Coast, rare breed. Tunis, rare breed. Romney, doesn't matter that it's not a rare breed. I'm glad it's not because we need more Romney wool in the world. Clun Forest, rare breed. And once again, I am very fortunate to have a farm near me where I'm able to source this. Jacob, this is a Jacob fleece. Um, this is another local fleece as well. It's not as local. This is, I, I actually don't even remember acquiring this fleece. I think it's from Wicked Child and Tacoa, but I could be wrong on that because it doesn't quite look like fleece from her sheep, but it's definitely a Jacob fleece. It has all the Jacob characteristics. Um, so that'll be interesting to put in there and the locks on this one is just a little bit longer than the locks on some of the others but it's gonna be okay and then last but not least can you guess what kind of wool that is right here look at the oh god that's gorgeous that is Gulf Coast native that is a naturally colored Gulf Coast native. That is from my one of my ewes. Her name is Camilla. She was named after um, the tea shrub, Camilla sinensis. And so she and her brother Rubus are both uh, black Gulf Coast natives. And so now that you've seen all the wool, I'm going to tell you what my plan is. Right now all this wool is raw. And my plan is to spin it raw and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the locks and then I'm gonna mix them all together and I'm gonna spin them as they come out of the basket uh, as they come out of the pile that I have them in and I'm gonna do lock spun yarn from one Tunis two Gulf Coast Native three Romney four Clun Forest Five Jacob, and then number six is um, naturally colored Gulf Coast Native, and that should be some really interesting yarn. So I'm gonna p I'll pick it. I don't think y'all need to see the picking process again. Um, so I'm gonna pick it, but the spinning 
is go should be really interesting um, so I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start spinning this and I can show you what I've done uh, to kind of mix this all up at that point so for me it's gonna be a few hours for you guys five four three two one voila nice fluffy wool so I weighed this wool and uh, in its raw state um, this is one and a half pounds of wool now obviously I will scour this after it's yarn and it's not gonna weigh that much but I'm still gonna get a lot of yarn from this so now I'm gonna do the part that I've been really excited about ever since I thought about this project and I'm going to do this All right, let me show you how we're gonna spin this up. Okay, so I've got this set up so that you guys can mostly see my hands while I'm working since um, I want you guys to see how I'm gonna do the lock spinning. Um, and I'll just talk you through it. Uh, it, it because with this lock spinning, you will create a much thicker single and the little wisps, nice little, mini wisps of wool that uh, end up along it, it tends to catch a good bit on your equipment. A bit of stopping and readjusting and things like that. Um, so let's get started. So I got my basket of random wool here and I'm just gonna take some out of the top. And so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to draft it a little bit and this is just to kind of get the separate um, types of wool a little more evenly distributed it does help too when you know when you have like a strip of it like this instead of um, just a wad of it um, and so that did distribute that a little bit more evenly, I think, um, which is what I want. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull out just a little bit to start. <coughs> Sorry, Jean Ralphio, I just sneezed on my cat. All right, so let's get started. Trap it. And then at this point, I'm, I am relying on the twist to do a lot of the work for me. So every once in a while, I'm going to need to stop and just check them where I'm at. I'm going to let the twist catch 
all the loose wool up here. Now I'm just going to draft it out. And if it wants to take a lock, ah, there we go, got one. If it wants to take a lock, can you see that? Let me. So you see how that one lock, this one right here, it's it didn't lose its shape or anything. It just got twisted into the single. And that's what I'm looking for is for that. Ooh, that's a good one. Look at that one. I gotta do that every time. Look how that got in there. And then when I apply this back, it will give it even more texture actually. Um, and it will hold everything in place. Like, I don't know that I would trust that lock um, by itself if I was to leave this as singles. I like to go back and I like to apply it onto itself so that I have all of my locks, they're locked into place. Ha ha ha. They're locked into place. Um, but they still look interesting. They actually, to me, look more interesting. So this is very much a um, textured uh, yarn. This is going to be very textured. Um, you're going to have multiple different natural shades. It goes pretty quickly. Like I said, the singles build up quickly. I mean, look at that. I have hardly been spinning long at all and I've already got a good bit of singles on there. And flying goes even faster. So I would never have attempted this when I first started spinning. I could not do joins. I could not do joins. My joint, I mean, I would go back and ply my singles. And I would have splits in my singles everywhere. It took me years to get comfortable with joints. And with lock spinning, not only are you having to do quite a few joints, but you're having to do very awkward joints because you're working with not a smooth combed out or carded bit of fiber. You're dealing with awkward locks that are wanting to stick together, you're dealing with um, blunt ends of locks and things like that. And so I've, I've, when I started doing some lock spinning, um, once I felt comfortable with my joins, I found that I was becoming friends with the twist and the twist when you are first starting to learn how to do um, spinning the twist is the magic key to holding all your fibers together but you are not working with your twist in the beginning there we go look at that I, I mean I just fell off so now I have to do a join on this and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but let me talk about twists really quick. When you first get started and you're learning to spin and you're having to do, um, you're having to learn how to work with the twist, it's not easy because the twist doesn't feel like a friend, it feels like an enemy. It just gobbles up your yarn, it gobbles up your fiber and you can't control it and it can be very frustrating um so once you've done once you've practiced enough that you're comfortable with the twist this is a great thing that you can do you can to stretch your skills in learning how to let the twist work for you that on here Alright, so to do this join, I'm going to make sure I don't have too much twist in this part. And I'm just going to look at, I mean, it picked it up immediately, and then I just include, and now it's, it's there. And those 
from the locks that go in there. So I gotta make sure. And you'll see, I'm not trying to smooth them. I'm trying to keep them smoothed out enough. Like this in here through here is good. I got that a little too bubbly and I'm, that's, that's the problem with that is I didn't get that quite smooth enough for that to, so I'll have to move that down to actually get caught in the twist. So that's more of a problem than anything. And look, I just moved that down and now it's caught in the twist. And I'm using this hand partly as supportive and partly if I get areas that I feel like need, could draft a little bit better to provide the support for that. Look at those Romney locks in there. Oh, this is a bit of Cam. This is a bit of herbal. Don't look at the veg in that. white get all the vegetable matter out and picking picking took forever I mean it was a pound and a half of raw wool and I think it took me I think I managed to get it all picked in about um, six hours so that's not bad so with this hand the other thing I can do is I can take this Get that spun all along the string. And I do want bits of the locks sticking out some. And so like in that case, you can see the tip of that lock is sticking out. And I want that. That adds some good texture. Ooh, look at that one. Most of that lock is caught. So it won't pull out of the strand but there's enough sticking out of it to make it interesting and when I apply that it'll it'll get most of that trapped down so it really won't be coming um, out of your single oh, just look at how that drafts and puts spin twist into it perfectly there's a reason this is so addictive it's just so cool to watch how that works and just goes from being a bit of wool Sorry, there's a big old chunk in here it's amazing how it can just go from a bit of wool into yarn just like that All right, let's move on to plying. And I went ahead and just did a center ply ball. It looks a mess. It looks a real mess. I got the center there. Somewhere along here, there we go. Got the outside. And what I'll do is I'll pull from the center, I'll pull from the outside as I ply them together. Fold those over like that. Get the twist in there. All right, so there's a couple of things. It's really important when plying from a center pool ball. And you do have to worry more about making sure you don't get um, bits that have plied back on itself. Uh, in your yarn. Um, now some people actually want to do that. Uh, you know, you could actually get really textural with your yarn. And you could do that on purpose. Um, 
but in uh, this case, uh, I don't want to do that because the I'm relying on the bits of of locks in there to give enough texture. Uh, the other thing I want to do is make sure I don't disturb those locks too much unless I want to. So, for instance, like this bit, I am going to make sure that gets in there a bit more. But this bit right here, I don't know how well y'all can see that. Um, I want to leave sticking out. So, I'm going to make sure. And then that wants to just pop right out of there. So, I'm going to make sure that I trap that. It's a little bit more. There we go. See? So I got this cool little tuft of lock in there. It's trapped in there, so it shouldn't be going anywhere. And it really is fun to watch all the natural colors working together. Because I've got I've got black and white here. I've got gray and black here. Um, I've got little bits of white and black in places and it really just adds to the whole look. Now you have a very textural looking yarn that also, and it's not like a bunch of overly done colors, it's just black, whites, and grays. worth it to take your time. Make sure you get it looking how you want it to look. No idea what he's so upset about. I mean, he's a cat. What do you expect? Show Raphael. Show Raphael. What are you doing? Oh, there. Hi. Come on. Gonna leave? Mm -hmm. I know you want in my lap. And that was that. He's off. I will be ending this video here and um, next week we will pick this up and we'll be washing these skeins to get them clean, see how they look for real, uh, and figure out what we're going to do with them. So thanks for joining. Have a good rest of the week.